uh, the way that I describe it, I literally say it's like, it feels like you're being haunted by demons. <laughs> but often they're demons of your own design. <sighs> okay, guys, I made it out. <laughs> Almost didn't, but it's on those days when you really don't want to do anything that you need to find that last little shred of willpower to just get out and do it anyway. Oh my god, see there's something about real world hills that is so much more intense than the treadmill. Oh, here I'm going to turn it around. I don't think that gives you a sense of the hill elevation, but just trust me, this little trail park starts out with a little bit of a steep incline. <laughs> Okay, it's oh, oh, a little muddy. Shit. <laughs> uh, at least it's not literal shit. Like the little clump that I saw. Thankfully I missed it. But, okay, let me get over. Oh, whoa, okay. I honestly think that I got a little, a little bit dissociated today. I think definitely when I was pulling into this park, I was just a little bit dissociated. Oh, please pardon me for being a little out of breath. There's just something completely different about um, walking in the real world versus when you are like out on a real trail or even just the sidewalk or something. You know, my, I love the little noises you hear. Sometimes they can be a little startling though, but when you're out in nature, but um, what I was getting at, my theory is that the treadmill does some of the work for you. And that's why like real walking is always gonna be a lot harder because if you think about it, when you're walking on a treadmill, it's like, it's um, the moving conveyor belt thing. It's like pulling your back foot away from you. And that's like kind of doing part of the work for you. That dissociation thing that I was talking about, it's like, you feel like you're removed from your own body you sort of feel like you're watching your POV like through a screen or something. It's a really, really discombobulating, I don't even, not quite a sensation, but like a perception. It's a really, it's really dis, disconcerting, discombobulating, all those words. This park takes so long to dry because of all the hills. It's like one day of rain and it takes like four sunny days to fully dry this place up. Oh gosh, this is treacherous. Oh shit. Um. Evasive maneuvers were, were taken. Oh God, not this fucking bench. I actually have a story about that bench that's coming up. I'll tell you about it. I'll, I'll sit for a spell there while we go down memory lane together, <laughs> so to speak. Okay guys, story time as promised at this bench when I was just at an absolute low. I, oh gosh. You know, I don't want to be sitting on this bench when I tell this story, I'm going to keep going. But it was that bench where I, while just completely out of my mind, and I, I cannot preface enough that I am horrified that I did this, beyond horrified. I have since 
reached out to this person and apologized so profusely and assured them that I was just in, out of my mind and that's not who I am or like, like I, I covered all my bases apologizing and wishing them peace and being so sorry for disturbing their peace and their personal recovery journey. And I just cannot emphasize enough that is something that I ruminate over regularly. And so hopefully by the time this is up, I'll have a video sort of covering that, like how I, how I experience rumination and also how I sort of deal with it and sort of get through it because rumination is just something so incredibly difficult. Like I, the way that I describe it, I literally say it's like, it feels like you're being haunted by demons, <laughs> but often they're demons of your own design, which sucks. But, um, okay, wait, there, there's some nice people here. Let me pause my story. But the thing I did that just sometimes haunts me so much to this day, and I deserve it. Oh, oh there I go again. Don't, don't reaffirm your ruminations. Um, two things can be true. It was a bad thing to do, but you don't deserve to feel constantly haunted by it um, in, the, in the present. So what I did, getting back to it, <laughs> There was, um, there was a, a mother on YouTube who was sharing her story about her son's suicide. And I reached out on that bench. I was like crying and I'm sure all the people who were passing me were like, like, oh my God, what is going on? I remember people passing me and I would like try to hold it in and they saw me crying and they would do that like sort of like sad smile thing like, oh, you poor thing. And, um, but I recorded a video and I don't remember which social outlet it was. It might've been Twitter, the, per the, the ma, the lady's Twitter, oh, mud. But I, I sent her a video just like hysterically crying and telling her that like, I just don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. Like continue to live. And that I just don't, you know, I know that this sounds so fucking nuts. And I acknowledge, that's why, that's why sometimes it still haunts me that I did that. But um, when I moved back here and I was in my just absolute crisis state. I, I had no one here, you know, like, yes, I was technically like with my parents, but that relationship, despite, despite their generosity of letting me return home, that relationship was strained to a point that I cannot even put into words. I, I did not feel safe communicating my thoughts and feelings to them on a daily basis, often it would just come out when I would just be so, be so like, like what, <laughs> like what is, what is wrong with you? You know, because I would just be so confused why they didn't understand how severe the situation was. Like I was already on the max dose of like, every psychiatric medication that I had settled on and um, their, their thought process with mental health has often been like, like you just need a pill and you'll get over it. That's not true if you have unresolved traumas. No pill is going to make you feel better when you have deep seated things from your past. So the point is, I couldn't talk to them. I also just, I had no, no friends here. The truth is I still, in, in, in this town where I'm still living independently again, but you know, I'm still here. I have no friends here. And at the time, um, I would cycle 
I'd say that I had even distanced myself from a lot of my college friends and my friends from the city because even though even though I would text them a lot it's like I, I there, there were times when I overshared but then there were times when I pulled back and so it would cycle back and forth but like at the end of the day I really didn't want them to know how bad things were how severe and serious the situation was. The point is, I really didn't have anybody. And I felt completely alone. And that's why, that's why I reached out to this poor mother who had experienced suicide. Her, t her teenage son committed suicide. And I just poured my feelings out to her and my fears and just feeling like I really didn't think I was going to last much longer. That particular day, I really didn't know if I was going to be alive the next morning. And I expressed all of this to her. And I thought, this is a complicated story, I really thought that I had unsent the message, I, I, I do think it was on Twitter. I thought that I had unsent my video. I really thought maybe like deleting it because it, it had not shown as red yet. So I really thought deleting it would unsend it. Because really once I gained just a little bit of mental clarity after the fact, I was it, at that time even horrified that I had done this. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? You know, it's like when those things where once you stop sobbing, once you stop crying and clarity sets in, you can really be surprised at yourself and what, what you're capable of when you're in that state of just like, what the fuck? Like, I know that you're just crying out for help, but that was just so beyond inappropriate. Unbelievable. Unbelievably insensitive. And... Anecdotally, that's another reason. If you're in a crisis state, do not, do not call people. Well, sorry, let me rephrase that. If you are in a crisis state, make sure that you're contacting the right people. I never want to say, I never want to say, like, don't make any calls because you might be embarrassed later because there might be times when you genuinely need someone to hear you and hear what you're going through and hear how you're feeling and hearing how, how you really don't know if you're going to make it until tomorrow. But make sure it's people who are in a place where they can support you and people who... In a roundabout way, there are people who, some people who don't need that. You know what I mean? She did not need that or deserve that. And I blocked her on Twitter because I thought like, like, okay, like if deleting the sent video message didn't undo it, then maybe blocking her, maybe that'll make it so that it never shows up. I really did not understand Twitter. I was not a regular Twitter user, but she did get it. And I had gone inactive on Twitter and um, somehow, and this is what killed me, she felt so concerned that she had actually like tried to find me on my other socials. And I think that like using reverse lookup or I don't even know if my cell phone number had shown up. I think she uh, found my Instagram and sent me a message on Instagram like saying that my video had been very concerning to her and it was something on the back burner where she had wanted to eventually find a way to get in touch with me to make sure I was okay and that's when I just profusely apologized and uh, 
That's something I still feel really horrible about. And I think you can tell by the length of the story just <laughs> how it almost makes me like sick to my stomach. And that's one thing that sucks about this trail actually. The fact that I did do that at that bench, but you know, I am gonna get through it because oh. really at this point there's nothing there's nothing else I can do I mean someday when I'm in a better financial situation um like I might see and see, I don't, I, I've like blocked so much out of my mind. Like, I know it sounds like I still hold on to a lot, but I've blocked out a lot. I don't, I honestly, I honestly don't remember her channel name or her socials. Cause like, I really just don't want to, but I'm sure if I looked online, I could eventually find her. So someday when I'm in a better financial situation, I might like send her flowers with another apology or something. But at the same time, I don't want like, I'm sure that she has put that out of her mind. She was just like, okay, this is someone who was crying out for help, who needed a good cry and just was in that dark place. And like, hopefully she's just put it out of her head because she has bigger and better things to worry about. You know what I mean? Like she's, she's got a lifelong grief journey to worry about and she has continued advocacy work to worry about. She doesn't need all these crisis messages, although <sighs> I don't know. But the point is this park is such a beautiful place. I mean, it actually is filled with a lot of dead trees, but it doesn't have a disturbing energy to it and honestly in the fall this place is just gorgeous with all the colors all the colors of the leaves can you see with all the colors of the wind <laughs> um, but I don't think I'm ever gonna walk by that bench without feeling just absolutely disgusted with myself at least for a flash of a second but I think I am gonna get to a, a place where I can pass that bench and not just feel like my stomach coiled up into a knot okay this is very muddy precarious at least there's ooh, there's lots of leaves though that helps <sighs> yeah, I'm losing light fast. I gotta keep the progress. But, um, yeah, and, and just to clarify, that is not at all why I felt like a little bit dissociated today, especially leading up to the park. Although, now thinking about it, maybe coming to the park added to that because like I just knew that taking the main loop I was going to pass that bench and maybe part of me just didn't want to acknowledge that or really think about that. I do think that talking things out though, sorry when I'm doing these little lunges it's because there's mud and I'm trying to jump over it. Oh shit. Um. Oh, okay. <sighs> okay. But I'm not going to get too much into the <sighs> theorized reason for the dissociation. Well, I might as well. Part of it, for sure. God, these squirrels are loud. 
part of it for sure was some like professional insecurity stuff really just being dissatisfied with my work and I think part of it is because I already felt a little bit out of it and so when I was working on some graphic design stuff for work I just really had a moment where I'm looking at all the stuff and I'm like going through trying to update the design of just a simple fucking coupon and it's just not coming together and I'm really doubting myself and feeling like like I can't I can't even do can't even do this like what am I doing and that honestly did send me just a little bit to the dark place not not thoughts of I don't want to be here or self-harm or anything but just thoughts of like Jesus like I feel like like I'm literally on the precipice of 30 and I feel like I have so little or so few marketable professional skills sort of that that vibe and feeling of like what the fuck am I gonna do with my life I literally can't do what I'm doing forever you know saw some big paw prints oh this hill right here is kind of neat it's like a felled log I think that got covered with dirt that's fun I think I'm getting close to the end good because it is uh we are officially at like twilight right now <clears throat> But, oh God. Yeah, that, that, was, that was mostly it. It was like just a lack of confidence and a lot of self-doubt and a lot of questioning. Like, what even can I do? And just feeling like trying to think like, what, what other jobs could be possible for me? Oh, sometimes... This is the shortcut I like to do sometimes, but definitely would be too dangerous for me to do while I'm holding this. Maybe someday I'll have like a, the little necklace mount and then I can do it. But, um, so it's not quite imposter syndrome or actually maybe that is, I don't, I honestly have no clue if that counts as imposter syndrome, but just kind of, I don't know, cause there are, there have been times when I've made like flyers and other graphic design imagery where I've felt really good about it. And then there are times like now where I feel like, God, it's just so simple, but I just feel like I can't see the vision. I don't know, but I really almost didn't make it out here. I was, I was this close, guys, really, really, really. I almost said, yeah, it's too close to sunset. I wasted too much of the day, just not even worth it. But no, um, I think I'm going the right way. Oh, the geese are here. Wow. Wow. I don't know if the mic is picking them up at all, but there's quite a gander out. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I was talking about and get out and get get out mo but I think I was talking about like no matter what just get out and move a little and like I've said in so many of my videos when when these little clouds catch up to you you have to keep moving because you have to outrun them because if you let it catch up to you and latch on to you for too long, then you're gonna stop in your tracks. 
So even when it gets hard, and even when, even when the desire is there to just crawl into bed and say, you know what, today, today was a, uh, a flop. Maybe tomorrow will be better. That's when you have to check yourself and be like, no, no, I already made the schedule for, you know, my fitness or whatever. Today was already going to be a more pleasant, low impact day, low exertion day compared to going to Planet Fitness. And I had already built in this Monday by design. So no, you're not going to fucking skip it. You're going to do it. Even though, even though you're cutting it close to sunset, get out there and do the best you can. There are all these like turns that you can take to shorten the path if need be. I ended up, I ended up doing the full main loop, which is the 2.1 miles. So thank goodness. But there, you know, like there are opportunities to cut it short at various junctures. So there's no excuse to say. Oh, maybe another time. No. Just do it. Keep yourself moving. Don't let yourself stop. Don't let yourself stay still. You know, that's what, that's what I've talked about. That's what I've talked about in some, God, there's a lot of trash. That's shitty when people just dump their sonic plastic trash shit. But the point is, in my past vlogs, I've talked about this. The difference between a real, like, you know, I just need to not do today for my to, to feel better, you know what I mean? Like, like I need to skip today because I need a genuine recovery day versus a, I need to skip today or sit out today because, because the darkness is lowering my mood, my energy, my spirit. There's a big difference there in my opinion. And so when it's, when it's the darkness, the dark cloud catching up to you, trying to drag you back into the pit, that's when you need to say like, no, no, no. This is not a self-care, like, this is not a self-care by resting situation. This is a situation where I need to comp, if I need to compromise, then that's fine. You know, like if I was gonna go to the gym, do a nature trail walk instead. But don't just give up and say, I'm not going to do anything. Because it's never just one day. As I've said, one day turns into two, into three, into a week, into a month. Suddenly you've lost another whole year of just being half alive on the inside. It's not fair to yourself. You deserve better. And so... Don't, don't let yourself stand still. Don't let that dark cloud catch up to you. You got to keep moving. Sometimes that's the best form of self-care you can give yourself. Okay. Okay, y'all, I made it to the end just in time. So I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully it's less, hopefully it's less muddy next time. Okay.